Uh, next speaker is Councillor Jason Kitkat, who's the Green Party leader of Brighton and Hove Council. So five minutes, please, uh, Jason. Thank you very much. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to strongly endorse and support the rewiring public services report. Um, I think it's fantastic. I'd like to congratulate everyone in the LGA and beyond who's contributed to it. I think it's brilliant. It shows that we need to keep working collectively and support the LGA and, and work together and not split into separate groups and, and be subject to divide and rule from government. Let's stick together as a united local government association. This is an excellent piece of work, so I fully support it. And I fully support the work in there which builds on Graham Allen's work, for example, about the strong constitutional basis to local government. We need to have a legal right to exist. I think that would be a good starting base for a relationship with government. Um, clear tax raising powers and clearly defined responsibilities that aren't subject to the whim of ministers and second um, order legislation that doesn't go through the full scrutiny. Truly local powers could, we all know, I'm speaking to the choir on this, um, unlock some of our economic challenges and strengthen our local economies. Um, we know best how to meet the unique needs of our local businesses. Unfortunately, we are stuck in a situation where the only things that attract the eyes of ministers are the really mega projects, the new plant building car engines or the mega, mega um, nuclear power stations. But that isn't the majority of businesses that we have in our areas. Most of them are small and medium-sized enterprises who barely register on the speedometer of growth for national ministers. We need to take those decisions locally. In Brighton and Hove, for example, we have the second highest number of small businesses created. We also have one of the highest levels of businesses being destroyed. I call this creative destruction. It's positive. And if you look at one figure in isolation, you wouldn't understand the creativity being unleashed. We know that this is positive. It's innovation coming out of our universities. Ministers are oblivious to that and just want the big box put somewhere to put the uptick in business rates. Recently, with the LGA, um, I visited Denmark, and we saw how government works there. And they actually have quite a mature relationship. There, each year, they say, right, local government, collectively, this is how much money you're going to have. And then, local government decide amongst themselves how they're going to distribute that. Now, that's a mature relationship, but my challenge to you would be, are we ready for that? If that was to happen tomorrow, could we actually negotiate amongst ourselves to distribute the funds? I would argue perhaps we've got a little bit of a way to go on that. But much as we desperately need reform, and I say once again that the reforms put out in the report are very positive and welcome, I don't think we can afford to wait for those changes to happen, because if they do happen, it will be slowly as best. We know that the grip of power is released very slowly from above. So I think in the meantime, we need to shift our mindset. If government are taking away the money, and by heck they are, then why are we letting them hold the levers and hold the power? We don't need to listen to them if they're not funding us anymore. Why do we need to be presiding over a managed retreat of services? I don't think that's the right mindset at all. We need to be proactive, finding new models and new ways of producing revenue. The entrepreneurial style of municipal government that we see overseas and in places like Manchester were famous for in the past. And we need to stop asking for permission. Because when we start asking for permission, we have to wait for an answer which we might not like. So we need to shift the mindset. Let's not wait around for this change, as welcome as it would be. Let's just go and do it. Because I think our communities are very clear about what they want, and we should just go out there, support their needs, and be a proactive, positive local government. And as the previous speaker said, hold our chests high and be proud. We're the most popular part of government, and long live local government. Thank you. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Jason. Our third, our next speaker is Councillor Jane Scott.